Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to dedicate my testimony to my brothers in bondage in Mauritania and to the blacks that have been suffering for a long time under the dictatorship government of Maurita uh, Mao Yaoursi Dahmet Taya. My name is Mohamed Nasir Ache. I'm a Mauritanian diplomat in exile here in the country, uh, in the United States. I'm also the executive director of the International Coalition Against Chattel Slavery. My personal nightmare and that of my family are simply insignificant compared to the daily harassment and abuses hundreds of thousands of human beings are experiencing day in, day out. But first, I would like to say this. God bless the Congress of the United States for calling and holding this critical hearing on slavery in Mauritania and the Sudan. By doing so, you are demonstrating an active interest on the slavery matter. Also, you are showing support for the slaves around the world, and in particular, for the slaves in Mauritania and the Sudan. Second, I'm also proud as a Mauritanian Harpular who first benefited of the political asylum status in 1989 in this country to take stand before the Congress of the United States and testify on behalf of our brothers who are still in chains in Mauritania by the Arab Berbers masters. There is more. Maui will see Ahmed Taya after seizing power through military plot and appointing himself chairman of the military junta, prime minister, defense minister, has presided over the most systematic violation of human rights and civil rights against the black population living in the south, targ targeting particularly the Halpular community to which I belong. The evidence of killing, rape, church of Halpula reached unprecedented height and created a crisis between Senegal and Mauritania. I would like to ask to say now who are the slaves in Mauritania? The Mauritanian slave are the product of invasion, raids, and rape of African women. They are called abd. Anti-slavery society, the oldest human rights organization based in London, calculated that, I quote, the country holds a minimum of 100,000 slaves, with a further 300,000 part-time slaves, or ex-slaves. This is written in 1982 by John Mercer. No matter how Arab Berbers came into contact with black Mauritanians living in the South, long time ago, events and his historical records have demonstrated that most of them were after hunting the slaves. Mr. Chazal, French colonial governor, regulated tax on slaves. He made that agreement with the Arab Berbers in 1932, the Arab Berbers were required to pay one for one slave, five gold, which was the, the, ta the taxation on such animal was two francs and 50 cents each, which means that an Arab master could pay 12 cents 50 for, to, to be free, to, to, to just not uh, go to war or something like that. In reports from Africa, Garba Jallo said, I quote, because of the massive sexual exploitation of female slaves by white Arab Berbers masters, the slave population or Haratin and Abd has increased to be, become the largest single ethnic group in the country. Professor Jallo said also that 40% of the population is slave. 
slavery today. In his introductory remarks to the, uh, the anti-slavery society, John Mercer wrote in 1982, and I quote, the head of state from 1960 to 1978, Mokhtar Uldada, who is the first uh, president of Mauritania, kept slaves behind his presidential palace. Mohammed Issa Qadari, a Kuwaiti journalist, wrote in the Kuwaiti newspaper, Al Watan, April 1989, page four, I quote, at the end of my last visit to Mauritania, among the gifts given to me, which I strongly refused by my Arab friends, was a black slave. It is titled, In its report titled, Mauritanian Slavery Alive and Well, 10 years after the last abolition, Africa Watch wrote, and I quote again, abolishing slavery which is deeply rooted in Mauritania is difficult and, long -term, and a long-term problem. Our criticism is not that the Mauritanian government has tried to er eradicate slavery, but failed. It, it, it did not try at all, says Africa Watch. We are not aware of any significant practical step taken by successive governments to fulfill that the important responsibility Mauritania undertook when it passed laws and ratified international agreements prohibiting slavery. Its persistence is largely explained by the fact that legislative enactments have not been accompanied by initiative in the economic and social fields. This is 1992, 90. And they say the same thing again in 1994 in their book, which is, uh, the, which is called The Campaign of Terror. It is a book, Campaign of Terror, in Mauritania, 1994. I thank you, uh, Mr. Sherman.